What is going on, everybody? It's the front, and we're here for our Monday Night Raw review for November the 22nd, 2021. We, which the theme of tonight's show was Who Stole Vince McMahon's Cleopatra Egg? You know, the egg from Red Notice that apparently was not the stage prop, but the real deal. A bullshit! This show sucked so badly. We started. And in the first seven minutes, an hour ago, like three hours ago, when this show started, we were seven minutes into the show, and I'm like, I want to turn this thing off, and I don't want to watch anymore. It was that fucking bad. Just, uh, I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know who booked half of the show. The main event saw... So, Big E defend the WWE Championship. Why? Because Vince McMahon wanted to know who was the man or woman who stole the egg. They didn't get any answers last night. And if they didn't find out tonight, by the end of the night, then two people would be fired. And that would have been Sonya Deville and um, Adam Pearce. Of course, that didn't happen. They found out who it was. And we got who that who the culprit was supposed to be but then we go from this and you open the show for Monday Night Raw and you see Sonya Deville and Adam Pearce looking very uncomfortable you see Vince there fingers like like bouncing like smacking his fingers off like you know doing that thing with his hand looking pissed off looking how I fucking looked going through this entire show like this was the best you could do post Survivor Series this show was fucking awful. And then, after all that, we go to the first match. And before we get to the first match, it's supposed to be Matt Riddle versus Dolph Ziggler. Why? Because why the hell not? We haven't seen that match before. And we see Randy Orton in gorilla position. Wondering, being asked by Kevin Patrick, where's your tag team partner? Your tag team partner's supposed to take on Dolph Ziggler. And then, after a little bit, Matt Riddle comes up dressed like Randy Orton. Fake goatee, fake mustache, has his hair done back, shaving to the one side, and just has a look like, oh, what am I watching? What the fuck am I watching? This was horrendous. And I'm sitting here, and it's like 8.07 when all this happens, and I'm like, well... If it wasn't for the fact that I do this on YouTube, even though I don't get much viewership and I don't get paid for it, I would have turned this shit off a while ago. Immediately. As soon as, as, soon as Matt Riddle showed up looking at Grandy Orton, I'd be like, and I will see you next week. This gets the... <laughs> rating for right now. That was just fucking stupid. So he goes to the ring. We have a match between Randy Orton... Between, I'm sorry. Matt Riddle and... Dolph Ziggler. Now, am I going to say the match was bad? No, but it's just I can't stop looking at Matt Riddle trying to beat Randy Orton. Thankfully, Dolph Ziggler ripped off the mustache and the beard from him and the goatee from him, which was fine. It was a pretty good match. It was fine. But mm -mm -mm. did not care for that. I, I just didn't care. Riddle pounds the mat. He hits an RKO. One, two, three. He gets the win. After the match, his uh, Randy Orton's music hit. He's not even coming out. He's not even using his music. Just using Randy Orton's music. Doesn't even use RK Bro's music, but rather Randy's music because he's imitating Randy Orton. Anyway, Bobby Roode attacks from rushes the ring and swings at Riddle, Riddle ducks and Orton kicks him. Orton scoops him up and hits the bro, the, the bro Derek after they do a fist bump. They celebrate. Everything goes off. They're all happy and everything. Then we go backstage and we see everybody, everybody who doesn't fucking matter on this show, just ripping and tearing the backstage area apart looking for this egg because, of course, Vince McMahon said, whoever can find the egg or bring the person for forward who stole his egg and can get it back to him will get a WWE Championship match. Okay, then. This was... 
Yes. Like, you saw, and it's sad because who's the first person you see when they're ripping and tearing away? Rhea Ripley. What? This shows you how much WWE cares about Rhea Ripley. A woman who at, the, at WrestleMania this year won the Raw Women's Championship and held it for a few months and then lost at the show about 9,000, but still won the Raw Women's Championship, went to NXT the next Tuesday, celebrated with Ren Raquel Gonzalez and Bianca Belair as the new face of Women's Championship champions in WWE, to now be running, looking for a stage prop egg. Becky Lynch comes out, she starts raises the title on the air, then heads to the ring. Mike Rum does the introduction, the announcer sends us to a video of how Lynch defeated SmackDown Women's Champion Sherbot last night. Takes a, she's here to take her victory lap, she stands in the ring. We go to commercial break. Back from breaking and Becky's in the ring, she talks about how her biggest moment being here in Brooklyn. Goes about how she, her biggest moment of course was 2018 in the Barclays Center when it was... Becky versus Carmella. It was supposed to be Becky versus Carmella one on one for the women's championship at SummerSlam in 2018. Then Charlotte got in the match and she won the championship. And it was supposed to be the slap that happened to Becky, that, that happened to Charlotte from Becky, was supposed to be a heel turn for Becky. She even came out the next Tuesday and cut a shitty heel promo that nobody believed. Nobody in their brother believed that she meant any word coming out of her mouth. And she became, that's when, that was the, the start of the man. And her rise to the man a year, like, not even a year later. And now, she says last night was a culmination of years. Of just back and forth between these two. The hatred growing for them. Fans loved it all and didn't care who walked out the winner. She goes on and says, but, but that's over. We're moving on to something fresh and new because fans like fresh and new. She asked fans who they want to see at the top. Bianca Belair again? Maybe Ray Ripley. Maybe her new number one contender, Liv Morgan. She said she used to put and she used to put so much stock into the fans' opinion until she learned they're full of crap. Some fans boo, she's still getting some stuff. She scolds them for their stupid little chants and stupid little songs, doing the wave. And everything that broke out during the two, the five on five women's money, the money women's um, tag team match last night. Which did you see that match, Becky? Nobody fucking cared about that match. How could you care about that match? It was booked poorly. It was. I'm gonna get so much use out of that. But it was it was just poor booking. And did anybody look good coming out of it? No. Was Liv Morgan the last person standing and being the final person to actually to show that she might be a little bit of threat to Becky last night? No. It was Bianca fucking Belair who did not need to win after winning the Royal Rumble this year, going to the main event of WrestleMania on night one, winning the Women's Championship for SmackDown, and holding the title all the way to SummerSlam. Yes, yeah, she lost it in 26 seconds, but she still had... A four or five month run as women's champion. What has Liv Morgan done up until this time? Absolutely nothing. She, except for win a number one contendership to the women's championship. How did you not book her to be the one on top, seeing she's getting the title match? It just made no sense. So the two, those two women's teams broke their back last night and the fans just didn't care but she said it hurts her to say this because she actually agrees with the crowd as none of those so-called superstars have what it takes to beat old big time Bex especially Morgan Becky says the fans like Liv because she's the underdog only winning one match in four years Becky says fans will just bitch and moan because Liv won't beat her and not every young underdog has its day Becky says she has the death grip on the title and no one is taking away from her Drops the mic, raises the title in the air, and her music starts up, and that is that. And, you know, I'm really surprised they didn't do anything else. It was just, Becky comes out, she says her piece, shits on the fans because they're still trying to make this woman the biggest heel in the company, even though it's not working. Here's the hint, Vince. So long as Charbot 9000 right, is in the company, the same company as Becky, Becky can't be a big heel. Charlotte is the biggest heel in the women's division. No one's gonna fucking top it. 
Becky should have stayed the biggest baby face you had, and that was that. Now we see how Belair, Bianca Belair became the sole survivor for Team Raw in the 5 on 4 traditional elimination match. Last night, last eliminating Shotzi Blackheart. Becky, B Bianca did not win this, 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 this not the sole survivor on her own. She was the sole survivor because SmackDown's team decided they wanted to count out their captain, fucking run into each other, and beat themselves. That's basically what happened is that Bianca Belair only won last night because they beat themselves. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, here comes Belair. She's in the ring. She talks about fans cheering her on last night. Really? I didn't hear any cheers. I heard CM Punk. I saw a wave of everything else but cheering you on to win last night. Which is how she was able to be the sole survivor. She proved the both brands that she is the strongest, the toughest, the better, blah, 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 blah. I'm so sick and tired of her. Bianca Belair is so full of herself. I like she is got like she's got such a big fucking ego. It's absolutely um it nauseating how big of an ego she has and the fact that people continue to cheer this woman. Now nah. she says maybe Piper never will go on somewhere now and says a few more words for for Piper and then to Tamina. Out comes Tamina with Natalia. Why is Natalia here? Because Everybody from Raw and SmackDown was supposed to be here. We didn't really. I figured we were going to have, you know, like, we start in the back and Raw, team, Raw, like, everyone's lined up in a big group while Vince McMahon runs everybody down or Sonya Deville and Adam Pierce run everybody down trying to find out who has the championship. But we didn't get that. No. We hardly seen anything. The only time we saw anybody from SmackDown was here. And the 24-7 stuff later. <sighs> Did I care about this match? Absolutely not. They're trying to... They're trying to... This was a rematch from last week. So if you saw last week's match, you didn't see anything fucking different. They're trying to have us be impressed with the fact that... Um, Bianca Belair was able to put Tamina in the KOD and hit the KOD. When she, when she deadlifted Otis, it was impressive. When she deadlifts Tamina... And hits her with the KOD, it's not as impressive. Just saying. After the match, Natalia attacks her, goes to put her in the sharpshooter, she gets kicked away. Looks like that's gonna be everything. But no, Piper Niven from behind, she lays her out and then splashes her and leaves her for the car the pavement people to come clean her up. Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor. So Seth Rollins comes out. He gloats about being the sole survivor. The fact that Kevin Owens abandoned his abandoned the team. How Austin Theory tried, but he wasn't good enough. And how he just runs down his entire team. And how he was the best of them all because he was the sole survivor. Him and Balor are supposed to have a match. And this match never happened. As back from break, Rollins in the ring. He does this whole mic thing. Balor is doing his entrance with Rollins Dexon from behind, knocking him out of the ring. Rollins unloads on him. They roll back in, back in. Balor tackles Rollins now and unloads with some strikes. Balor with a right hand, which, by the way, why didn't the ref ring the bell? Then they got back in the ring. Why didn't you ring the bell? Balor with a right hand to knock Rollins out of the ring. Balor runs the ropes and leaps out with a big suicide dive to the floor. Brings him back up in the ring, but Rollins retreats back to the floor. Balor charges in the ringside, but Rollins catches him and slams him face first into the top of the barrier. Looks like he might have busted his nose. Rollins unloads on Balor around the ringside area, now beating him down and stomping away. Grabs the half of steel steps and smashes Balor in the face. Holy shit chant Roll rolls Balor back in the ring, hits a stomp, officials come to check on him. Balor now runs, now um, checks on Balor, now his fans boo. Rollins comes back and deliver another stomp to keep Balor down, and he makes his entrance, his exit. Now, this is the one people are going to talk about. Seth Rollins is going, is leaving and going up the ramp. Some fat face dipshit, because this motherfucker was a fat ass, decided he was going to be a big hero to, set the, to Finn Balor, jump the barricade, run at Seth Rollins, and fight Seth Rollins. It is not your right to go to a um, WWE, WWE or any wrestling event 
it is a privilege you go you buy your ticket you have no right to jump the barrier and go after the talent why do you think the fucking talent hate us Gee, I'm sure Seth Rollins was hoping he was back in the Blunder Dome because he wouldn't have to worry about fat-faced dipshits like this stupid fuck running out and attacking him. Do not ever, and I mean ever, leave, leave your seat to go over the barricade to attack somebody who is in is a professional wrestler. Don't fucking do it. This is a problem I have with places like GCW. Remember when, um, when, um... Matt Cardona won the GCW title and people just pelting and throwing shit at him. Yes, it, it's a nice visual, but when, how, like, that's like when people are going that far, what's next? They're going to jump the barrier and they're going to attack. And that's what happened tonight. That person will never be allowed back in the WWE arena, never be allowed back to the Barclays Center, and probably AEW will probably have, will get something from somebody and ban this person too. So I hope. You had fun attacking somebody, you stupid, fat, dumbass motherfucker. I hope this is a lesson to everyone. Stay in your lane. Stay in your seat. If you're upset that your fan favorite is getting pit, is getting beat the piss out of by the heel, too fucking bad. It is not your job to jump the barrier and going out and attacking somebody. Fucking stop this shit. You ruin it for everybody else. You absolutely do. So hopefully this stupid fuck is, he was turned over to the police in New York. And this is New York, motherfucker. I hope you get locked away and you don't get to see the letter of the day again. Don't be stupid. Go to the arena, cheer, boo, say whatever the fuck you want. You don't, if you're going to get out of your seat, the only place you're going to go is you're going to go out, go back up to the concourse to go to the bathroom, get some food, get some drinks, whatever. But don't... Go towards the ring side area, period. Don't be like this stupid fat face dipshit. <laughs> Moving on. We see more superstars running wild looking for Cleopatra's egg. Sami Zayn is Vince is off and Sami asks if the title shot is still being offered as a reward for finding Cleopatra's egg. Sami goes on about how he knows who stole the egg. He's pretty sure, 95% sure. Vince asks if Sammy knows who the thief is or not. Vince goes on and tells Sammy to bring that person to his office, but Sammy says the thief is not here yet. He wants to shake hand Vince's hand, but Vince tells him to deliver the, uh, the person. We'll talk about that here in a minute. AJ Styles and Umas versus the Street Profits. Now, Montez Ford and Angela Dawkins, they come out. Dawkins has a duffel bag. What's in the duffel bag? I don't know. He hasn't shown us yet. So we have this match and basically AJ Styles, is, he starts the match as he usually does when it comes to the, the, these tag team matches. He tags Omos in and Omos pretty much just beats the hell out of these guys. We go to commercial week, we come back and I'm like, why is AJ Styles in the ring again? Why is Omos not just beating the living taste out of these guys and beating them up? Well, the Street Profits can't do anything to Omos, so... Oh, Dawkins goes out to this nice little duffel bag and pulls out a fire extinguisher. Why do they have a fire extinguisher? What, is, what good is that? He takes a fire extinguisher, he sprays it in Omos's face, they ring the bell, the match is over. What was the fucking point of this match if all you were going to do was that? Seriously, why? I want AJ Styles and Omos to be done. AJ needs to go on and face Big E for the WWE Championship. I'm not saying beat him, but be a guy who can fight Big E for the championship. This was... Until AJ Styles and Omos split and Omos disappears, I really don't know what else to say. I just hate seeing AJ Styles in a position lower than him. Omos, the Omos has a ceiling, a very low ceiling. The only thing special about Omos right now is that he has not been taken off his feet. Nobody has knocked him off his feet. Nobody has pinned him. Nobody has done any of that. The second, the moment that happens, Omos's career in WWE is dead. D-E-A-D, -E dead. 
Carmella and Zelina are backstage when Sarah Shriver stops them and comments, comments on their game plan tonight's title match. The only I need a game plan for Ray Ripley because they're not worried about Nikki Trash. Which, that just shows you right there how much WWE cares about Nikki. This entire superhero getup, if you thought that it was anything that WWE actually cared about, the fact that two women on low on the totem pole in WWE were saying, we only need game plan for Ray Ripley because we're not worried about Nikki, just shows you everything you need to know. They overpower Ripley with their royal skills, then leave Ripley and Cross with no titles. They keep talking each other up and looking ahead to becoming the new WWE Women's Tag Team title Champions, and they walk off. We go to that match. We have new Tag Team Champions, because I could give sh two shits about this match. This match was... <laughs> Yes, that's what this match was. First off, I have this question I keep wondering, though, from Carmella. You have this whole gimmick where it's like you have to stop what you're doing, you have to go put the mask on, blah, 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 blah. Why do you not go when you get your entrance done? Why don't you put the mask on immediately? I don't understand why you have to go out of your way to... Um, you have to go out of your way to make your entrance, stand in the ring, the bell rings, and go, wait a minute, time out, I gotta go put a mask on. Just put the mask on immediately. Go out, like, just instead of going in the ring, walk around, get the mask on, or hell, just come out with the mask on. How hard is that? Nikki gets destroyed by both women after Ray Ripley gets taken out. We have new tag champs, boob, who? More vignettes from Via Mahan, whenever the hell that's coming, who gives a shit? But we have new tag team champions. Who fucking cares? These titles are so irrelevant. It's fun. It's still funny how, what was it, three years ago, we got these titles introduced in the lamest way possible on a moment of bliss. She just pulled a, a thing away. There were the championships. They won them in the elimination chamber. Bailey and Sasha Banks were planning they were, they were supposed to have a long lengthy title reign but that got thrown away because wwe decided that they needed to put these titles on a joke team like the I moronics and they won the titles didn't even show they were like they won those championships those two did and then we didn't see them on tv other than maybe once a month and when they faced two people it was jobbers one was chris statlander at one time mind you when they had, they went up against. Uh, I can't remember who the fuck they were. It was like the one or two times they defended the title against a bunch of jobbers, and then the they lost them, and it, they, the titles have just been irrelevant ever since the Moronics held them. Backstage in Vince's office, Sonya Deville is excited as she sees Anna Pierce. Says Anna Pierce has figured out who happened to the Cleopatra's egg. Deville says Pierce is to bring him in, and now as we go to commercial commercial break. Back for break, and Sami Zayn is in Vince's office with Pierce in the Veil, brags about getting this done. They will yell at Austin Theory to come in. He walks in with Vince's golden egg. The villain Pierce were told to leave. Vince asked Theory why he stole the egg. Theory knew the, va the, the value of the egg, but he didn't. He just wanted to take a selfie with it. Sami is excited and says Theory's story is full of holes. Vince says he's going to drop the charges because Theory reminds him of himself. And now Theory will get the title shot. Theory takes the selfie as Vince poses in the background with the golden egg. Theory walks off. Sammy rants to Vince about how Vince went back on his word. Vince, now clutching his golden egg, tells Sammy to shut up because no one likes a snitch. So, you steal property from your boss, Vince McMahon. You hide because you wanted to take a selfie. I bet you Vince McMahon in real life doesn't even know what a selfie is. But you hide your crimes for about 24 hours. You finally get found out. You get brought in. You hand the thing up. You say, oh, I was just to take a selfie. And you're rewarded for a with a championship match. Who books this shit? This was stupid. Absolutely fucking stupid. Wow. Terrible booking. Sami Zayn, no, he shouldn't have got the WWE Championship match. He is on SmackDown, mind you. So this was one of the other few things that happened Smack from SmackDown. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with giving Austin Theory a push. 
No problem with that. You want him to go out there and beat Jeff Hardy, beat this person, beat that person, build his way up and eventually de like defeat Damian Priest for the U.S. Championship? I'm fine with that. But you're putting him in a U.S. title. You're putting me in a WWE title match because he stole a prop that you want to claim is a real egg, and you wanted him. You're you're fine with that. Oh my head hurts. Oh my 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 head fucking hurt. Reggie versus Cedric Alexander for the twenty four seven I ninety five your Continental Championship crap. Cedric Alexander, one of the best premier athletes they got in this company. Former cruiserweight champion, former tag team champion, member of the Hurt Business, if that's still a thing, is fighting for the 24-7 championship. On top of that, he wins it in about two and a half minutes. However, Cedric Alexander was beat for the title by Dana Brooke. If Cedric Alexander isn't fired by WWE in the next set of cuts, I will be fucking shocked. You had Dana Brooke jump off the top rope, take him down, and pin Cedric Alexander for the win for the 24-7 championship? Bless all that. You had all these goons, including our truth just sitting there. It's like, oh, what do we do? What do we do? It's a woman. Carmella was the 24-7 champion at one time, and our truth pinned her. So, why didn't you just have somebody roll her up? Why didn't you just have somebody roll her up? It's not that hard. But they just let her celebrate and don't know what to do. Dana Brooke is a champion in WWE. Whether it's 24-7 or not, she won a championship. Are you serious? This woman has to be, like, got some dirt on Vince or John Laurinaitis or Bruce Pritchard. How does she still have a job when other people have got much more talented people, including women, have been fired this year? I just don't understand it. What value does she bring to the WWE? Hell if I should know. We look at the recent happenings between Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio and Bobby Lashley. They're backstage. Dominic tells his dad he should have done something when Bobby Lashley applied the hurt lock last week. Ray tells Dominic not to beat himself up and say Lashley isn't the first monster he dealt with. He goes on and says he can fight his own battles and doesn't need Dominic's help. But tonight... He will fight by Dominic's side, fighting for him and his family. They go say Lashley should be shaking his boots because he has a Mysterio ass will be coming. So we get Bobby Lashley versus Ray and Dominic Mysterio. Bobby Lashley got, gave them way too much. I don't care. If you just if you're gonna have Bobby Lashley go off come off as this most dominant, this dominant threat of a heel. Then just have him come, go out there and kick these guys' ass. There is literally no reason he should have been giving up as much as he did. I'm sorry, but no. This, this company just doesn't get it. This was, this was just stupid as shit. Like, are you fucking serious? This is the best you could do? Having Bobby Lashley have to go out there and sell for Dominic... Struggle to beat both of these guys. He should have beaten these guys. Beaten Dominic down. Beaten Don Rey Mysterio down. Put both of them in the hurt lock and ended it. He does eventually ragdoll um, Dominic with the hurt lock after Rey Mysterio gets taken out. And that was that. Kevin Patrick is backstage with WWE Champion Big E. He says he's let a lot of people down last night at Survivor Series with his loss to Universal Champion Roman Reigns. No, you didn't let anybody down other than people you think because nobody thought you nobody really thought you were gonna win last night. You can't blame Paul Heyman or even the Usos, it's all his fault. And he goes on and says he isn't worried about Seth Rollins or Kevin Owens because he has to defend his title against Austin Theory tonight and says Theory is young and brash, but he's also talented. He says he'll defend his title and lead the Barclays Center with the title, feeling pretty, 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 pretty good. And he walks off. Open challenge, U.S. title, Sami Zayn versus Damian Priest. This actually came, Priest came out, and Apollo Crews came out first and said, and they made it seem like he was going to challenge for it, but he said it wasn't going to be fair, so he said no. Then Sami Zayn came out, he wanted the match, he got the match, he lost the match, who gives a shit? He pretty much, he pissed off Damian Priest, Damian Priest killed him, that was that. 
Backstage, Liv Morgan is with the, is with Kevin Patrick. He says tonight is a bittersweet because Team Raw won on Survivor Series, but in comes Becky Lynch and insults Liv for uh, once again underperforming. Again, this would have been a perfect place to have Liv. Like, if you're gonna have this segment here, Liv should have been the last woman standing. It does no favors for anybody that Bianca Belair was the last person standing. It doesn't. <laughs> But she said she also brought up money in the bank where Liv was just seconds and inches away, but somebody came in and stopped her. Then Nikki got the briefcase. One went on to do the went on to win the W the women's championship the next night and do something that you're never gonna do. And she starts insulting her, mentioning her friends who are no longer here, and just keeps insulting her, wants her to cry, and then Liv just Cold cocks her and walks away. So that's going to happen. When that match is going to happen, I don't know. Does WWE really have the ability to hold this match and the Big E Seth Rollins match off all the way till January 1st, 2022 with Big One, with Day One? Hell if I should know. Kevin Patrick with Austin Theory. Theory brags about tonight's WWE title shot and selfie he got to take with Vince. Theory looks ahead to becoming the youngest champion tonight and says, no disrespect to champion Big E. He's a great champion, but he has won. He was a big loser at Survivor Series while Theory is the future. Theory says, everyone knows he's the future. The future is right now. And he goes on and says, Vince McMahon clearly sh- certainly knows Theory is the future. And Big E knows it soon. We'll, we'll know it soon enough when he takes a selfie as the new WWE champion. So we go to that match. Austin Theory versus Big E. The match was fine. Biggie, well, Seth Rollins came out before the match started. Before we go to the first commercial break, out came Kevin Owens. We come back, and for whatever reason, Biggie is distracted by the other two. Austin Theory takes over, and things are going Austin's way. He's actually doing well. And then Seth Rollins attacks Biggie while the referee isn't looking. All of a sudden, Kevin Owens throws Seth Rollins into the ring. Didn't touch anybody, so no DQ. He comes back out. They're having a big fight. They're yelling back and forth. And then Austin Theory is watching this stuff happen in the ring. Like, it's, like, if, like, these guys are on his side or on his team. And he's like, what are you guys doing? And he's, like, grabbing his hair. He's like, what's going on? Why the fuck am I? It's like, why do you care, dude? Just turn around and take on Big E. So he turns around right into a big ending. One, two, three. And Big E retains the championship. In one of the most piss poor ways possible. And that's how Monday Night Raw ended with Biggie standing tall, Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins running for their high tails, and that was that. Nothing else I can say. This this show sucked. The egg storyline was fucking stupid. It was pointless to bring SmackDown over here, even though last night was supposed to be the only time of year SmackDown and Raw team people face each other. Well, did you not see tonight that you had Kevin, um, not Kevin Owens, you had um, Sami Zayn versus Damian Priest? That was SmackDown versus Raw, so again, you wasted our time. Good fucking grief, this show it fucking sucks. Until Vince McMahon actually gets out of here and we get somebody in here who knows what the fuck they're doing. Vince, Bruce, Kevin Dunn, and, and John Laurinaitis all need to leave. Triple H needs to come in with Shawn Michaels, um, Road Dogg, and his group. And make this and get these shows better. Plain and simple. I am sick and tired of seeing this show be as bad as it is when you have so much talent on these rosters and you keep making these shows fucking worse. But that is your Monday Night Raw review. Hit that subscribe button, comment down below, like or dislike this video. Find me on Mize of the France Club and find me on twitch.tv slash the France Club. And find me on Instagram at the France Club. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday for AEW back in Chicago. Until then, my name is Franz, and I'll see you guys later.